Happy Father's Day. My name is Jason Groth, Community Life Pastor here at the Well Church. I know that I'm a little bit dressed down today, but I thought I could get away with it on Father's Day to wear Girl Dad shirt. So, yeah, for those of you who are new, uh, Mary and my wife also wearing green, semi-planned, but not really. Uh, a couple of years ago is when we stopped preventing. We got a prophetic word from Bob Hazlett, and then in October, and then December is when we got pregnant. So that's pretty cool. Pretty cool. So we love you. So glad that you're here. Um, bathrooms out and to the right, right over there. There's also some more bathrooms downstairs. Uh, there are some people who are masking and social distancing. Miriam and I are still part of that club as well. So I'm fist bumping. Would love to hug you. Please know that. Physical touch is one of my love languages. So I'm hugging. It's, I'm, hugging sounds kind of weird, but I'm hugging you in the spirit. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so today is one of those days that is transformational. The presence of the Lord has been building and building and building in here. And I can totally feel it. Today is one of those days that when you press into the Spirit, you will be encountered in a way that like you've never been encountered before. So I invite you to step out of any kind of comfort zone that you might be in, just step out of it. The Lord honors that. I invite you up front to worship the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. Today is the day of transformation. Father, we bless you and we thank you, Lord. We thank you, God, for your nearness. Praise you, God. Let's worship the Lord. You guys ready to worship? Come on, here we go. Sing out, let out. Let out a mighty roar that brings the praise to you. Declare the victory for the battle is the Lord's. Let it out. Lift up a mighty shout that moves the mountain. Breaks the chains of bondage, sets the captives free. Let out, let out a mighty roar. That brings the breakthrough. Declare the victory for the battle is the Lord. Lift up, lift up a mighty shout. It moves the mountain, breaks the chains of bondage, sets the captives free. So we dance the dance of breakthrough. Sing the song of victory, Jesus. Is our King. Come on. Before a demon trembles, in His name darkness flees. Jesus is our King. Sing a song of 
is our king we lift your praises high hallelujah hallelujah jesus is our king we raise we raise the battle cry Lift up a shout of praise. Thank you. 
Sing His praise aloud. Sing His praise
chains hit the ground. Oh God of revival, pour it out, pour it out. Come awaken your people. Come awaken the city. Oh God of revival, pour it out, pour it out. Every stronghold will crumble. Hear the chains hit the ground. as we were singing this and the first one was um, I just saw a picture like a map of America and and just chains around it have that had been fallen off and I just feel like God is breaking through some strongholds in our country and there's a big shift and a shaking that's taking place just thank you for the shaking it's when the prison doors are shaking and the chains fall off the chains fall off the chains fall off we will praise till the chains fall off we will praise till the chains fall off Father, that you are raising up your people, God, to take a stand for truth, for justice, for righteousness, God, that we would be those who love well with your love, God. I just thank you for that, Father. Oh, God, that you'd pour out revival fire. There's no prison, there's no prison, 
wall you can't break through, no mountain you can't move, all things are possible, and there's no broken body you can't raise, no soul that you can't save, all things are possible. All things are possible. We just thank you for your presence, Father. I thank you for your power, God, that nothing is impossible with you, God. As we were singing that song earlier, God, it just, that phrase just kept going through my head that every promise is yes and amen, God. And so I just thank you for that, Father, that you are faithful to complete the work that you've started, God. And so we just thank you for that, God. We just declare that you are bringing completion to things, Father, that you are um, just causing shifts, Lord, and miracles to happen. We just thank you for it. In Jesus' name. There's a sling in my voice and a stone in my praise Pushing back when the darkest weapons fall There's a power on my lips Even death can't defy when the name of our God is lifted high. Come on, every voice. Because there is resurrection power. When we sing the name of Jesus, resurrection power. When we raise mighty sounds. Come on. Come on, let her praise. Get out. Make that empty grave. Raise out. there is resurrection power. In his name, there are days I have seen filled with heartache and loss that have buried my heart beneath their weight. But every time my praise breaks out, dead things rise up from the ground. I won't leave my song inside that end. resurrection power when we sing the name of Jesus resurrection power when we raise the mighty sound so come on let the praise get loud make that empty grave raise out cause there is resurrection power in his Let's make this our declaration over this country. With every voice lifted up. Dead man, come out of that grave. Come out of that grave when we sing. Captives, let go of those chains. Let go of those chains when we praise. Dead man, come out of that. Come on. Come out of that grave when we sing. Let go of those chains, let go of those chains When we praise dead men Come out of that grave, come out of that grave When we sing captives Let go of those chains, let go of those chains When we praise dead men Come out of that grave, come out of that grave When we sing captives Let go of those chains, let go of those Oh, 
Go of those chains when we praise dead man. Come out of that grave, come out of that grave when we sing. Captives, let go of those chains, let go of those chains. Come on, the church is waking up in this hour. We say, Brian, arise, arise, arise. Dead man, come out of that grave, come out of that grave when we sing. Captives, let go of those chains, let go of those chains when we praise. And dead men come out of that grave, come out of that grave when we sing. Captives, let go of those chains, let go of those chains when we praise. Dead men come out of that grave, come out of that We praise you, Lord. We praise you for your goodness, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you are more than able to conquer all darkness, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that your church is rising up, that your church is awakening. Thank you, Jesus.
We all know the story well of Lazarus being raised from the dead. Mary and Martha are crying out to Jesus, letting him know that he's sick. So what Jesus announces to his disciples that he has fallen asleep and they thought he meant in the natural, but actually he, he meant he had died. So it says, Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb, and it was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there is a bad odor, for he has been there for four days. I've been seeing the number four constantly. Four, 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 forty-four, four. I've sung that song many, many, many times, and the Holy Spirit spoke very clearly to me that for some of you in here, and I believe it's for the whole body of Christ, and if you're watching online, that there is a dead man that you've been dragging along with you. That dead man represents things of your past. It's an unregenerated man. It is a man that is now dead because of the fact that you have a new life in Christ, but you have not let go of the grave clothes. You've not let go of the things that actually have shaped some of who you are that isn't adding to you, but it's taking away from you. The freedom that Jesus died for. It says, so they took away the stone. I declare today that the stone of your heart, that hard stone of your heart is being taken away. That that hardened heart is being replaced with a heart of flesh. It says, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you will always hear me. Father, I declare that you're hearing us right now. It's 1044 a.m. And this is the day that that hardened heart is being replaced with a heart of flesh. You always hear me, Father that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and his feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave, grave clothes and let him go. I declare over you today, that whatever is holding you back from really functioning in your true identity in Christ, a freedom, a freedom that can only come through the blood of Jesus Christ. It only can come from His Word, His voice that was spoken, His Word that went forth, and the Holy Spirit produced His Word within that man, and He rose from the dead. I say, dead man, come out of that grave, and I say, may you receive a new life today, the freedom that Jesus died for. All of the hurts, all of the wounds, all of the rejection, all of the things that have formed within your heart, that have caused you to be walled up and walled off. You cannot experience deep connection, vulnerability, and intimacy until that heart and heart is replaced with a heart of flesh. And I say today, grab a hold of the new life. Come alive. Come alive out of that grave. Dead man, come on. Come on, give that praise. Come out of that grave. Come out of that grave when we sing. Captives, let go of those chains. Let go of those chains when we praise. Dead man, come out of that grave. Come on. Come out of that grave when we sing. Captives, let go of those chains. Let go of those chains when we praise.
Take a moment and just play the instruments and let his voice speak to you. Let his presence wash over you this morning.
to be with you So dear man, come out of that grave Come out of that grave when we see Captives that go with those chains That go with those chains when we praise Dead man, come out of that grave Come out of that grave when we sing Captives that go with those chains That go with those chains service today. I said, Lord, what do you want to do during service? He said, let them know that I'm canceling debt today. And then I heard him say that where there has been debt that has been incurred, it will not accrue. That debt will not be able to continue to pile up on top of his church. See, every chain was broken today. We're not just talking about chains of sin and bondage and depression and things like that, but the chains of debt are being broken off of people's lives today. So if you in this season have found yourself, and there's no shame attached to this, this is a, we have been in a, a shaking, we have been in a very hard time as a nation, but if you have found yourself in debt beyond what you've experienced before as a result of these last three, four months, I want you to stand up. Now, if you've experienced financial prosperity in this season, I want you to stand up. Oh, wow. A little more than that. <laughs> Thank the Lord for stimulus checks. <laughs> oh, Lord. If you would go, wave your hand if you were one of those people that have incurred debt during this time. I want you that have experienced prosperity to go, and if they're okay with it, to lay your hands on their shoulder. I wanna pray for a, a, a coming against of lack. And I even want to extend it. If there are people that have experienced uh, cycles of lack and cycles of, of poverty in your life, would you wave your hand as well? Keep waving. It just seems like you can't break the cycle. These are chains that are, that are trying to hold you down as a believer. If you would, you see, we got, okay, good. We got people around them. Our Father, we thank you that today Today is the day that you said that you are canceling debt. So we agree with your word, God. We agree with your word, Lord, that you are canceling not only current debt, Lord, but the cycle of poverty over the, your church in Jesus' name. Your church is never meant to care, be carrying around debt, was never meant to live in poverty. Lord, but we thank you that your church is going to be a glorious bride filled with wealth, Lord, that there will be a transference of wealth, even as your word says that the wealth of the wicked has been stored up for the righteous. So so we thank you for that great transference of wealth to your church, God. Not for our own gain, but for the, pro for the uh, furthering of the gospel of, kingdom, of your kingdom across this globe, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that your church will not be found begging bread, but will be found in prosperity in Jesus' name. So we cancel debt over their lives in the name of Jesus. We cancel all debt. We cancel all assignments of, of poverty in the name of Jesus. Everything that is even attached to the identities of your church Lord, that your church believes that they should be a poverty church.
We cancel that identity in Jesus' name. And we thank you for your identity, for a heavenly perspective of the way that we handle finances, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your heavenly perspective in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. And Father, I pray for wisdom of stewardship as well, Lord. That, Lord, as, as the chains are being broken, Lord, I pray that each and every one of us would not go and grab those chains any longer. But I pray for wisdom of stewardship over finances in this season. Lord, I thank you that even, Lord, that you're saying that this coming season, there is gonna be a heightened sensitivity to the stewardship of your word, the Lord, that as you are speaking on where we are to put our finances, Lord, that, there, that as a result of this coming season, will bring forth the authority for the next. I really feel strongly, uh, I'm, I'm reminded right now of the parable of the minas, that, there was, that they were given a, a certain amount of minas to, to be stewards over. And as they came back to their master, as they came back and they saw the stewardship that was given, that they were actually able to multiply the minas that they were given, finances, that they were stewards over their finances, that the master's response was, you have done well, good and faithful servant. Now I give you authority over cities. You see, there is, a, there is a, a, a direct correlation to the way that we steward our money, to the authority that he releases over uh, influence over cities. To those that, that did not steward, that were actually lived in fear and buried their minas, that tried to hold back from the Lord and said, even what you have, I would take away from you. We are meant to expand what it is that he has given us. And I really feel strongly in this, this coming six months that there is going to be an, an extreme emphasis on the way that we steward our finances because it, it, as a result, will correlate the amount of influence we have over our city in 2021. I believe as we as a body of each and every individual in this place, not just the people handling the money of the church, but the people of the church handling their own money. I believe that as we are stewards over the finances that God has given us, that he is gonna be able to continue to trust us with more, not just so that we have bigger bank accounts, but that we can further expand the gospel of his kingdom across this globe. So thank you, Lord. Father, I pray for there to be a financial prosperity in this church, Lord. I even pray, Lord, that there would be a favor again, even as it was poured out over this body at the end of 2018. You guys know, in, in 2018, we raised $400,000 in four months. That's $400,000 in four months. That's 100 grand a month. Oh yeah, that's four, look at that. Four and four, 404 months, something on that. But that's as a result of what the Lord is pouring into individuals' lives. And each and every one of us becoming stewards and, and grabbing a hold of what the Lord was saying, responding to his voice more than our bank accounts. See, there, there needs to be a, a response of his voice above the circumstances that are going on. You know, we've been talking about this entire time during COVID that, that it's not a time to respond according to the economy around us, but according to what it is that he is saying. Just as the word that, that my mom had given at the very beginning of this, that the church will progress, not regress. In the natural, it looks like everything is being taken away. In the natural, it looks like our finances are being sucked dry. In the natural, it seems like there could be fear, but if we had not heard his voice, then we can be shaken. But we're a people of his voice. We're a people of his voice, responding to what he is saying and not what the news is saying. Thank you, Lord. So we're gonna give in the offering this morning. I just bless each and every one of you that have that has stood up in faith for the canceling of debt. Honestly, I, I, I cannot wait to hear the testimonies. We have so many testimonies of debt being canceled. I'm gonna share one real quick just to boost your faith. I was in the middle of building a, uh, a new restaurant at one point in time, halfway through construction. We've got a bar up, we've got the, the walls are starting to go up and I ran out of money. Boom, bone dry. And I ran out of money and, and that next service I had went to, somebody walked up to me and they said, hey, I heard the Lord say that I was supposed to give this to you. And they handed me a check for $7,500. And it was the exact amount I needed to finish the construction of that place. See, when we're a people that are responding to the voice of God, we know and we can trust that he's a good father and he's gonna take care and provide for every need that we have.
Not only every need that we have, but every mission he tells us to go on. He's providing the way so we can expand the gospel of his kingdom. It's so good. So be encouraged. That's getting canceled. Thank you, Lord. Amen. There's a few different ways that you can give this morning. Um, you can text to give if you'd like. We'll have the number right up here. Um, also, we are going to, what are we doing now? That's right. So you can bring your offering to the front as well. Ushers are going to be dismissing you by aisle. And if you are wanting to uh, physically distance, and I just ask that you just maybe step out of your aisle right now. It would be a good time so that people can get by you and we're not crawling all over each other. But if you'd like to bring your offering forward, you can do it that way. You can also give on our app. If you go to the app store and download the Well Church app, you can give that way. Also, last way to give, you can give on the wellgr.com. We have a new website. Check out the new site. It's really, really cool. Wow, I thought it was so much cooler than your response to that. Check out our website. It was really, really cool. Thank you. Oh, my gosh. It's a cool site. All right. You guys can give this morning. Let's give and be generous with what the Lord has given us. There's a sling in my voice and a stone in my praise, pushing back when the darkest weapons fall. There's a power on my lips, even death can defy when the name of our God is lifted high. Cause there is resurrection power. When we sing the name of Jesus, resurrection power. When we raise a mighty sound, come on, let the praise get loud. Make that empty grave breathe out. There is resurrection power in His Resurrection power when we sing the name of Jesus. Resurrection power when we raise a mighty sound. So come and let the praise get loud. Make that empty grave breeze out. There is resurrection power. Johnson here to give you this week's announcements. First off, our fire starters, kindergarten through second graders, are released right now. You guys can go line up just outside the sanctuary by the stairs with your teacher. Our community life groups are starting up again soon. We would love to have you consider signing up to lead a small group or a meetup. Small groups are ongoing groups that meet regularly in someone's home and meant for deeper connection, discipleship, and forming lasting relationships. Meetups are six-week activity-based connection groups and are a fantastic way to get and stay connected with others. More details and signups are on our website and the Church Well app. This Tuesday night at 6.30 p.m. is prayer. We will be meeting in person this week. We are excited to meet back together again here at The Well. Join us this Tuesday for a powerful time of prayer. Our volunteer appreciation dinner will be held Friday, July 10th. This is for anyone who has served with us as a volunteer for more than six months. Please make sure to RSVP with your meal choice today. 
You can let Ashley Lewis, our events coordinator, know if you did not receive an email for this and have served for six months or more on one of our teams. We appreciate every one of our volunteers. It's time to sign up to be baptized. Baptism is the next step in a believer's walk following salvation. It is a declaration of belief in Jesus, His death and resurrection, and is an act of obedience that symbolizes our death to sin and the old life and our new life in Him. On Sunday, July 12th, we will be baptizing those who desire to publicly profess their faith or rededicate their lives to Jesus. If you would like to be baptized during this service, please sign up on our app or website. Join us on Sunday, July 19th at 10 a.m. for a powerful service with Jamie Galloway. Jamie is a longtime friend of the house. He carries a revival message that imparts a lifestyle of the supernatural. You will not want to miss this service. Cityquake is coming up on August 19th through 22nd in Taylor, Michigan. We are one of the partner churches bringing Cityquake to our area. It is a three and a half day event similar to Power and Love, which will propel you to become who Jesus created you to be. Cityquake will motivate and activate you to live out what you believe. Join Dave Wagner, Chris Overstreet, Tom Rutolo, and Deshaun White for this life-changing event. Come and receive the confidence to walk in signs, wonders, and miracles, energized by the love of Jesus every day. Sign up by July 1st for the early bird price of $59. For more details and to register, please visit cityquake.org slash Michigan. We are partnering with Jubilee Center's International Child Sponsorship Program. Sponsoring a child monthly will allow you to build a unique personal relationship with a student in Honduras. It will also provide tuition assistance for them to receive high quality Christian education. Together we are working towards a holistic Christ-centered transformation of the children, their families, and their communities. For more information and to sign up to sponsor a child, please visit The Bridge. Thanks everyone, have a great week. Wow. I love this church so much. All through worship, it's like, uh, um, I can hear y'all and I can hear them and I, I love it. I feel like I'm in a giant chili bowl of glory. So my name is Max. I'm going to lead us in communion. If you want to get the, the cups and stuff ready, I'm, I'm excited. I feel like I'm carrying a part of something that God wants to do this morning. And I want to start with a story from yesterday. We were, uh, we were with some of my favorite people. Yep. Pastor Matthew is one of them. Is that me reverbing right now? Um, and we were doing one of my favorite activities. And I was really thankful and just, honestly, just grateful, thankful to Jesus. And, but what kept happening all afternoon yesterday was we were on the beach and we would ride towards the sunset and I would see the, you know how the light rays shoot out of the sky and it looks like fingers everywhere and the sky was like 15 different colors of blue. And every time I would look at the sky, I would get these hot tears that would hit my face and I would become aware of the presence, aware of like, like it feels in here, just riding. And so I was thinking about it all yesterday. I was thinking about how, you know, you can do your favorite thing with your favorite people, but there's something different when, when he's that near, when you become aware of him with you. And that's the place that I love to be. So I'm, I'm thinking about that all afternoon, kind of just meditating like, God, you really are the only thing that satisfies. I would, I would look and I would just get in awe of, you know, majesty that the psalm says that the heavens declare the glory of God. And it was like an instant, you're my dad and you're right here and you're powerful and you're awesome. And uh, so I get home, I'm exhausted and I'm getting ready for bed. And I hear the Lord say, you know, you don't need to hear a new thing. You need to hear an old thing in a new way. And I said, that's cool. That's interesting. So I was praying into it. And I started thinking about how a sunset is like one of those things. Like, 
we see a sunrise and a sunset twice a day, every day. But if, if you're anything like me, I have maybe three or four a year where I'm like in awe, you know, most of them just come and go. And I feel like what the Lord's doing this morning is he's bringing back a freshness to the gospel. He, that tender heart, that it's fresh. And so I started, during worship, I started thinking about Revelation where John has this encounter. The Lord says, come up here. And he gets up there. He gets into heavenly places. And he sees angels. And they're singing, holy, holy, holy. And the elders are throwing, casting crowns at his feet. And the thought that hit me was these angels are like at least three or 4,000 years old, depending on how you think about when they were created. So they're like, thousands of years old and they have no issue being in awe and wonder of the Lord. <laughs> and I started to think there's something, there's a grace that I want to tap into, learn how to live in, that this gospel would be fresh, that I would be renewed day after day because I'm training for eternity. And so if you want to drink to that with me, that's what I'm asking the Lord for. If you want to take the bread and then I'll, I'll pray. drink the cup the blood that speaks a better thing and God I ask that you would unlock a revelation and impartation of a freshness this morning let it let it be here this morning but teach our community teach this family how to stay in the rhythms of your grace Lord let let what you've done for us be fresh every day. In Jesus' name, amen. So I would get to invite Apostle Kathy up. If you guys would stand, she's going to bring the word. Thank you. Um, you can be seated. We have something special we want to do today for Father's Day. Pastor Matthew, if you would come up. As our father in the house. And we have something special for you. It's a bouquet. A great fragrance bouquet. Uh, <laughs> amen. <laughs> it's the manly man bouquet. It's all beef jerky. Beef jerky. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. Thank you. So we just want to want to pray over you and thank you for um, everything that you do here. I am so proud of you. Just as a mom, but then also as a senior leader in this church, um, if you are believing for a, a child, a loved one, I can tell you that they can go really close to hell, and yet God can redeem them. And that's what they, he did with him. If you want to read about his story, you'll have to buy my book, Shatter Shame, coming out soon. <laughs> well, Father, we thank you for uh, Matthew and for his life, for what he carries, for what he brings. God, I thank you that his influence is increasing. Hmm. And I feel like this influence, um, Matthew, is going to increase in the city. And I see um, you actually governing. And uh, God, I thank you whew, for opening up doors, God, where he will um, stand before um, governing authorities, for he will be one of those people who are in authority, governing and ruling and reigning in law. God, I thank you that he, um, you've been preparing him. You have been preparing him. He's a man of integrity. He's a man who's sold out to your heart, much like David. He's a man after your own heart. God, I've seen him worship when no one's looking. I've watched his kids watch him worship the Lord. He's the real deal. 
and his heart is sold out to you. He's a man who's not afraid to cry. He's a man that's not afraid to get on his knees. He's an amazing father. He's a great husband. And he has always put his family first. Even with his business, he said, I will not work more hours because my family has to come first. And he makes sure that all of the families that work for him, that their family comes first. And you're the one that sees that. Many people are hearing it maybe for the first time, but you see it, God. He is an example to follow. Much like when Paul said, look at those. Look at those who are doing well and follow after them. Follow me as I follow Christ. We are honored, God, to walk with him and to be led by him and by you. In Jesus' name. God, I just thank you for Matthew, Father. I thank you for um, just all that you've poured out over him, Father, the gifts that you've placed within him, God, and um, his ability to lead well, God. I just thank you for new levels, Father. And um, God, I just thank you for the fruit in his life. I just kept seeing like there's more beyond what you even know, like that it just keeps going, 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 and um, it's replicated. And so, God, I just thank you for that, Father. I just... Um, God, I just thank you for the increase in Jesus' name. I thank you for um, even more strategy, Lord, even more um, wisdom, God, and revelation, Father. And um, so I just thank you for that. And the other thing I kept seeing was the that God will give you the words to speak before you even speak, it, like know what to say. And um, so, God, I just thank you for that, Lord. I just thank you for your word on his mouth, God, and um, your word in his heart, Father. I just thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. That's a good son. He said, you got lipstick on your left tooth. <laughs> I love it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have you pray for the other fathers in the house. If Ahmad, Max, Jason, if you guys would come stand here, please. Happy Father's Day. Thank you. First one. How exciting. How do you feel? Uh, giddy. Giddy. Uh, All right. Father, thank you so much for these fathers here. Lord, I pray that you would just continue the uh, legacy of integrity that they carry. God, I thank you that you would continue to make them examples of your glory, Lord, examples of your presence, God, examples of humility, examples of sacrifice, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for there to be just an overwhelming sense of your presence in their families. God, I thank you that they have made family priority, Lord, and I just ask that you would continue to cultivate that in even a deeper way, Lord, that the roots of family would go deeper within each and every one of them, God, that they wouldn't um, be distracted by the things that come in life, distracted by the opportunities that you provide, Lord, or that are coming to them, Lord, but that they would maintain that same priority, Lord, that we would put up in, in our business, God, that they would maintain the priority of family above all else, God, because family at the end of the day is the only thing that we get to take with us. Lord, all the things that are temporal here on this earth except for people. And so, Lord, I pray for the value of, of family, the value of, of integrity and humility to continue to shower through them, Lord. Thank you for the way that they do lead in this church, God, that they will lead in homes, Lord. I thank you for, uh, God, just there to be a greater level of anointing in this coming season, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that you would give a greater level of of, 
of identity, God, a greater level of humility, Lord, a greater level of prosperity through their lives, God, and that it would be prosperity, not financial prosperity, but, Lord, that it would be prosperity of relationships, that it would be prosperity in the way that they father, that it would be prosperity in the way that they manage their their selves, the way that they manage their lives, God, and the way that they um, help to manage their families' lives as well, Lord. I pray for a prosperity over that in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Yes. Everybody else stand up. Dads. All the dads. Spiritual dads too. If you're spiritual dads, you can stand up. All right. All fathers, natural or spiritual, we're going to pray over you. I just saw this um, image of a, uh, a hose coming out of the ground and it was like a, a regular garden hose. But down deep below that um, was a great well that the hose was attached to. And for so long, um, I really feel like that fathers have been expected to just to hold, to do things in a certain way. And it's out of our own fear and insecurity of being able to dig deep and letting things be seen under the surface. And I really feel strongly that there is, a, um, as I pray today, that there's going to be an uncapping of the hose, that we're going to remove the idea of what we're supposed to be as fathers and become who we, got, we, we were created to be as fathers. And so, Lord, I pray for there to be an identity released over fathers right now in Jesus' name, that there would be a vulnerability that would be opened up. Lord, that the hose of expectation of society would be cut in the name of Jesus and that fathers can be vulnerable and strong at the same time. I thank you, Lord, that that fathers can be caring and manly at the same time. So I declare over the fathers in this house that they would continue to rise up in strength and in humility and an identity in Jesus' name. Lord, even the same thing I prayed over them, I pray for there to be a prosperity in their home, Lord, a prosperity in the atmosphere of their home, Lord, a prosperity in the way that they father their children, Lord, that it would be a fruitful relationship and not one of contention, Lord, but that the relationships that they have with their children would be life-giving, Lord, they would be life-giving and that they would be present and that they would be uh, even just carry a heart of service toward the children that they have. Lord, I bless them. I thank you for their lives in Jesus' name. Let the well come forth. In Jesus' name, amen. Yes. I love our fathers. So important. I want to talk today about being wholehearted. One of the things that the Lord has really been speaking through my whole entire life, and I think it's really important that we grab a hold of it in this season in order to really um, capture everything that God is doing and has been doing and everything that he wants to do. And it can only come through a wholehearted people. You know, hurting people hurt people. You've heard me say that before. And it's important that we are whole. And I started realizing, I was asking the Lord, I'm like, why is this person acting like this? Like, I don't get it. And, and you know, I'm... I'm racking my brain. I'm trying to figure it out, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm asking God questions and praying over situations, and I'm like, I just don't get it. And I realize that people's actions and personality comes from their life experience. And so what I was, even when I was uh, praying earlier today, I kept seeing how um, we can, often carry around an old dead man that we're still carrying around this this stinky staunchy right because death is not pretty and 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 it's it's decaying and yet for some reason we still want to you know put it up on our back and we're carrying this thing around and and most of us don't even realize it. it it's kind of like shame it's 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 something that is is so deep in the soil of like secrecy and of of judgment you know it it, 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 it's it's so down deep that you don't even know that you have it most people do and don't even know it and and it's the same thing of like just carrying around this this dead man this unregenerated man and i'm saying man as in as mankind men or women 
And, and, it, and it's time to, like, recognize that your life experiences, even from when you were a child, if it's not dealt with, is still going to create an image of who you are. And, and, and it's a false image. And then what happens is because you haven't really created an identity that's based on the word of God, that's based on who he says you are, you create a false identity. And that false identity, you don't even realize that it's not who you really are, but it's not who you are. So you're trying to pretend like you're somebody you're not, and so the people will like you, but they're not even liking who you really are. They're, they're, they're actually they're, they're attracted to the person that you're trying to create that you can't really ever be. Because it's, it's, it's based on a false narrative. And the false narrative is all of that mind chatter that's going on in your head about your past or who you think you should be or what you should be like in order that you could be accepted by the people that are around you. Because if they really knew who you were, they wouldn't like you. And that's not an identity that God wants us to carry around. And so I'm hoping that today, my prayer is that from the beginning of the service, through worship and through this word, through this message, that that false identity be once and for all broken off of your life. Amen? I'm 52 years old, and some of this is like, is, is, is like light being opened for me in, in, in areas where I'm like, wow, I'm not carrying this around. I don't have like, you know, I'm on the other side of the hill, <laughs> and so I'm going to be picking up speed here, and so I don't have enough time to be wasting. Are you listening to me? So can we put up, um, this used to be called, um, some of it is out of that book of Orphan, um, that, what is it, From Slavery to Sonship, but I asked the Lord about that. I said, this is more than just an orphan mindset. This is a broken-hearted mindset. This is, a, this, is a, this is a mindset that has not been made whole. And that comes through Romans 12, 1 and 2, that we have to be re, uh, renewed by, uh, by renewing our mind through the word of God. So when you look at an unhealed heart, you see God. You look at him as a master. You think you have, you, 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 you're, 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 totally convinced of like, I'm going to, I have to memorize the scriptures. And it's almost like um, the, re it's a religious side of like, I'm going to get down on my knees. I'm going to face east and I'm going to, you know, do this. It's like, it, it's like you see God as a master. That's his image. You don't see him as a loving father. You're, you, you, you can't pray uh, out loud or you have um, trouble praying because you don't see him as just your daddy. And you think that you have to quote scripture when you pray. When you can just say, hey, Father, I'm hurting. Hey, Father, I need, I need some increase here in my finances. And how can I do that? Can you help me? Just talk to him. You can just talk to him. And when you're wholehearted, you know he's going to hear you. you, when, you're, when, you are not, you're broken, when you are not and you're broken, you are self-reliant and independent. You're, you're, you're going to just be, like, by yourself. You, you would rather be by yourself than you would like to be around anybody else. Nobody is going to speak into your life because you know better than anybody else does. Because if somebody speaks into your life, that means you have a weakness. That means that they know something that you don't. And then somehow that makes you bad. That's a lie. When you're wholehearted, you're interdependent. I acknowledge my need. I know I don't have it all. I seek counsel. I want input. I want what I don't have because you have a gift that I don't house. I need you, and I'm okay with that. When I'm not and I'm unhealed and I'm broken, I'm insecure and I lack peace. I'm constantly striving for the next thing. I have to prove myself. I live like this theological um, love of the law instead of living by the law of love. 
I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to obey every single law. I'm going to, everything, I have, it, it's, it's a religious spirit that just comes and says one, two, three, and four, instead of operating out of love. When your unhealed heart, you strive for the praise, approval, and acceptance of man. You need approval. When you're wholehearted, you're totally accepted in God's love and you're justified by his grace. You know that you are secure in the foundation of who God says that you are. And again, you're not afraid if somebody points something out that maybe isn't, you know, maybe it's a little speck in your eye that you're not seeing. Maybe it's a blind spot. That's the problem. It's a blind spot. We can't see blind spots, and somebody shows us what that blind spot is. If you're not wholehearted, you will look at it as though they're rejecting you. You will look at it as though they are, they're, they're, they're um, criticizing you, they're, they're, and you'll feel shame because you'll feel like you've just been publicly, publicly humiliated. And when you feel publicly humiliated, you feel shame. Go to the next one, please. When you have an unhealed heart, you have a need for personal achievement as you seek to impress God and others or no motivation to serve at all. If you're in a business, you have to, you're going to work so hard. You're going to work as many hours as you can so that you can prove that you're successful. You put your family second or third or fourth, but they do not come first. Because your, your heart is not whole, then your work becomes your God. If you're, it's not your work, it's, 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 you turn to alcohol or, or something else becomes your God. And you, you're, you're in this constant place of having to, to have achievement. It's like, I'm going to be the best at this, or I've got to be the best at that, or, 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 or my son is the best, and my son is amazing, my, 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 my daughter is amazing. And they have to be, I, I have to like have something in my life that shows that I have achieved something. My church is the best. My car is the best. My house is the best. Whatever it is, you have to achieve so that maybe you grew up and your father said, or your mother said, but usually it's, it's the father figure that establishes the identity in their children. And the father says, you're not going to amount to anything. And you say, I'm going to prove you wrong. And so for the rest of your life, you're striving and you're going to say, I will amount to something no matter what. And no matter what you did, it wasn't good enough. If you got an A, you didn't get an A plus. And it was this constant having to measure up to a standard that nobody could ever meet. You know, the Lord spoke to me about how the Bible says that we're supposed to honor our mother and our father. And we absolutely have to do that. But let's say growing up, either your mother or your father didn't treat you well. What if you never told anybody that? What if you pretended like you had an amazing father and mother who just never did anything wrong. None of us have that. But what if you're carrying around that false perception which causes a false identity and you've never shared with anyone that my father wasn't there, my father didn't treat my mom well, I felt much like an orphan. I felt rejected. Whatever the case may be, I felt hurt. And you've never opened up. That will create in you someone who you're not supposed to be. Because it's a false narrative that will create a false identity. And you're still carrying around a dead man. You have to be willing to be vulnerable. And when you're willing to be vulnerable, that is the beginning of healing in your life and becoming wholehearted. Because we need to be wholehearted so that we can bring a message of love to people 
that is authentic, that is genuine, that is real. That makes sense? Motive behind Christian disciplines, duty and earning God's favor are no motivation at all. Pleasure and delight is your wholehearted. Your service that is motivated by a deep gratitude for being unconditionally loved and accepted by God. Motive for purity must be holy to have God's favor, thus increasing a sense of shame and guilt. Whew. That was me all day long. I, to the point, this is not an exaggeration, I would not ever show my arms in church. So to wear like a sleeveless top would have been like, I'm going to burn and go to hell. I remember sitting, I'm not kidding, I remember sitting in a service. And I was so hot. And it was summer. And I have on like... This is, this is just cute, but I had on like something, and I was like wanting to take my jacket off so bad, but I had a tank top on underneath, and I thought, oh, I can't do it. So I sat and sweated. I'm not lying. I prayed over everything that came across my doorstep. Because if I was going to be holy, I was going to be holy. And I knew that if I was that holy, that I would have more favor with God. Because my holiness and my righteousness was totally based on me performing for him. Shorts? <laughs> I wouldn't have been caught dead in a pair of shorts. Unless they were below my knee and they were called capris. Not too high. I'm serious. People actually, that, that is religion, guys, girls. Our righteousness is not based on what we do. It's based on who we are in him. And that will, want you to, that will make you want to be like him. The other is striving and it's law and it's tiring and it's draining. When you're wholehearted, you want to be holy. Like I just said, you do not want anything to hinder an intimate relationship with God. If you wear a tank top, it will not hinder your intimate relationship with God. In fact, the people around you may be thankful because you're not sweating. You may be hindering their relationship with God. <laughs> when you have an unhealed heart, self-rejection from comparing yourself to others, it's this constant comparison that you do. It's why you have a hard time being vulnerable and transparent because you're, you're having to compare so you criticize others. Your self-image is at stake. So you're, when you're healed and you have a whole heart, you're positive and affirmed because you know you have such value to God. I woke up a couple of mornings ago, and I just I had just a weird night. So it wasn't a good night. And then, uh, so I woke up the next morning, and I got up, and I was like, I should feel awful. But I don't. <laughs> so I'm like, what is this? And I, I, I'm like, I feel so good. So I got up, got my um, sh tennis shoes on, got dressed, got my tennis shoes on, and I went for a walk by myself, and, and just, I had a, like just a lot of like vitality, and I, I just felt, all of a sudden, I, I felt the word value, and I'm like, I feel so valued. I wasn't feeling super valued by people, I was feeling super valued by God. All of a sudden, it was like, I I'm like, I know I'm valued, but why do I, I just really feel valued. And I thought, it's that moment when it hits you that you are so valuable to God. 
and it energized me. I, I mean, I went for a brisk walk. I got in the house. I went downstairs. I drug out my um, weight bench, and I set it up. I got my weights out. I started lifting my weights. I'm like, yeah, I'm doing this thing. I'm living life. And you ever notice that when somebody does that, like you're just like living life, somebody likes to come along, come on, stand up. Just walk. Someone likes to come along and go, and just wants to trip you. <laughs> that was with my bad ankle. <laughs> We're healed. But you recognize what's going on. There's an unhealed heart and a whole heart clashing and colliding. And what has to happen? We have to quit becoming unhealed with the unhealed. Instead, we have to become whole, continue to stay whole, and heal the unhealed. And not be critical and not be judgmental. Because that's shame. Shame will never empower. Shame will only degrade. People who are unhealed, that's not shame. They're just not healed. It's just like shame. You don't know you have it. You don't know that you're walking around with a dead man. You don't know that you're walking around with an old mindset. So I had this thought, what if the things life brings us, builds us up instead of tearing us down? What if we operate out of this place of wholeheartedness. How will I treat my spouse? How will I treat my family? How will I look at my job? How will I look at my neighbor? How will I look at how God views me? Everything in life changes when you come from a standpoint of being wholehearted. When you say, God, make me whole. And, and, you, and look, this is a process, guys. This isn't like a, like a take, you know, I'm going to take a pill and, you know, whew, I'm whole. Nope, it does, it's not like that. It's a process, but it's becoming vulnerable enough to realize that you want to be made whole and that there's no shame in having hurts or wounds in your life. There's no shame. As much as you're trying to be great parents, you're probably going to do something that's going to wound your children. And you can't be so preoccupied with whether or not you're going to do this parenting thing perfectly or not. Because what you get to demonstrate is what it's like to come from a family that wasn't perfect and still wind up following Jesus and living a wholehearted life. The best thing you can do for those of you who are parents is when you argue in front of your children, you make up in front of them too. Don't go to another room and pretend like you're not arguing. And you're in there, you're trying not to raise your voice, but you're really mad. And your kids know exactly what you're doing. Just get it over with right in front of them. And then kiss and make up right in front of them. That will create a whole heart. Ephesians 3.20. I'm getting a scripture in there. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or think according to the power that works in us. We have a power that is working within us to create us into the image of Jesus. There's a power at work within you that if the Holy Spirit was within you. The anointing and the presence of God abides within you to make you a wholehearted man or woman of God. First, we have to be willing to draw near to God. Our identity gets established through our intimacy with him. Here's the breakdown. 
how can I have intimacy with my father if I look at him from an unhealed heart? And yet my identity gets established through drawing close to him. He says, if I draw close to him, he will draw close to me. There's the tension. I want my identity to be established in him, so I need to draw close to him. But when I draw close to him, I only see him as a master and I see myself as a slave. I don't see myself as a bond servant who I'm choosing to be as his, his servant, but I see myself as just a slave and a servant. And because of that, I actually will, t- will treat others the same way. Because as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So how I view myself is how I will view others. Um, I have so much I want to say. So I remember when um, our son, Kubi, this was recently. I wish he was here because I shake my little finger on him. I said, remember our conversation, Kubi? But I'm so proud of him because... He wanted to get a a car because he he has his license now. He's 18, graduated from high school, and he wants a new car. And so he wants like a seven or eight thousand dollar car. And I'm like, well, you, I don't think it's a good idea because you just started working, you know. And 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 Dad says he'll co-sign a loan for you. And I'm like, not feeling it. Don't think we should co-sign anything because you know what's going to happen. It's happened two other times, you know. Kind of handwriting on the wall. Um, they're not going to pay for it. We're going to pay for it. That's how it always works. Not a good idea. I think that you should save your own money and buy your own car. And his little, like, balloon got popped, and he went like, you think so? I said, yeah. I said, you know that car that you're driving right now, that Jeep? Yeah, the windows won't stay up. I said, I know. I said, my car, my first car, I had rest. I could see through the floor. And the snow and the rain would come up through the floor. So I had to make sure I had enough rubber on there so I wouldn't feel it. And it was a manual and a stick shift and it had a manual steering. You know how you turned it like 10 times before you could turn? It was great. It was a good like muscle builder. So then everyone that was sitting on our deck last week, and everyone's telling their stories of their first car. I said, but it can be your car. How about if you just fix this car up, and you can drive this car, and it's yours. And then in the interim, you can be saving up money so that you can buy yourself your own car. He goes, you know what? That's a good idea. He said... And I said, we we had talked beforehand, Ahmad and I, we had agreed that we would give him some money for his graduation, that he could then use that money to help, you know, fix up this Jeep. But what he saw was something that comes from a whole heart. Like, it's okay. I don't have to operate out of entitlement. Like, I have to need you to give me something. And I don't have to, because I'm operating out of a whole heart, I don't have to give him something so that he'll approve of me. You see, as a stepmom to him, it would be easy for me to want to buy and earn his love. But I'm going to stand before him, not before him. And I want my father to be proud of the fact that I wasn't trying to earn his love I don't need to earn his love. Because I know that someday he's going to remember this lesson. And he's going to teach his children the same thing. So we need to draw near to God. And even if you have an unhealed heart, the first like step to becoming wholehearted is to admit it. Shame will keep you from being vulnerable. It will keep you from walking in your God-given identity. Shame will keep you from admitting the fact that you don't have all your stuff together. But God wants you to come to him 
all broken. And he wants to show you who he really is. And one of the ways that you can do that is ask God. He will do it. I say, Father, clean my filter. Remove the stuff from my eyes. When I read your word, I'll see it through the light of love and not through the light of judgment. Because maybe you were so, maybe you were raised so hard. You know, maybe your upbringing was hard. And for men, a lot of men, it, it was that way, especially, I feel like. But even for women, you know, I was abused physically, emotionally. I was raped. It was awful. And so I, 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 I wanted real love, but I didn't know how to get real love. I would always find myself in this codependent relationship trying to earn somebody's love. Like, please, please love me. I know I'm a good person. If you could just love me. I couldn't really see who I was because I was so desperate for somebody's love and acceptance. His love is perfect. And it'll cast out all fear in your life. Can you put up the third one, please? Source of comfort, check in or check out. You seek comfort in counterfeit affections, addictions, compulsions, escapism, busyness, hyper-religious activity. I think that says it for itself. Ask, ask the Lord, God, am I seeking counterfeit affections? Do I have addictions? Am I compulsive? Do I buy compulsively? Am I escaping into my work? Am I just busying myself? I'm in, am I in this hyper-religious activity where I have the Messiah complex? Or am I wholehearted seeking times of quietness and solitude to rest in the Father's presence and love? Peer relationships. Are you in competition, rivalry, and jealousy toward other successes and position? I remember one time... I. I, I love my spiritual sons. I remember Max one time when Matthew was, um, I can't remember what it was, but it was something to do with his business. He was just experiencing a lot of success and favor. And Max said, you know, I'm just going to be honest, I'm jealous. I'm having a hard time. I feel jealous. And I knew that that was the beginning of God healing something in his heart because he admitted it. And I, 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 I love that vulnerable, like willing to like say, this is how I'm feeling. And so what happened as a result is he went from an unhealed heart in an area to over to wholeheartedness where he looked at his relationship with Matthew, and now they have a bromance going, which is really weird. But anyway, um, it's like humility and unity as you value others and you are able to rejoice in their blessings and successes. When you can look at somebody who's, who's, who's thriving and, and you don't have to strive to be like they are, except they're thriving and you're like, yeah, this is amazing. Keep going. I'm right here with you. And, 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 you're, and you're applauding them. That's because you're coming from a whole heart. When, you, when you're looking at how do I handle other people's faults, there's accusation and exposure in order to make yourself look good and by making others look bad. So it's like, wait a second, that's not right. And so your spouse could be saying something to you trying to correct you in an area, and you come back with bum, 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 bum. Well, that's what's the matter with you. It's like, wait a second. Like, we're, 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 can't do that. Let's, if we come over here to the side of where we want to be, and this wholehearted, what we're going to do is we're going to say love is going to, love is going to cover as you seek to restore others in a spirit of love and gentleness, where you say, hey, let's, let's, let's not argue. Let's not, let's not be at odds with each other. Let's talk. Let's communicate. Let's actually share what's going on. What's going on in your heart? What's going on in my heart? Let's have understanding. Let's not be critical and fault finding and see the worst instead of seeing the best. Are you listening to me? And you're looking in the view, your view of authority. When your heart is unhealed, 
You see authority as a source of pain, distrustful toward them, and lack a heart attitude of submission. You're touchy, like you're easily offended. You're, you're, you're like, you're, you're, you're wondering what their motivation is behind why they said what they said and why they're doing what they're doing. It's because you still have a hard time with submitting to authority. And because you have a hard time submitting to authority, this is where you're going to wind up over here in this unhealed part. Because many of us, every one of us could probably raise our hand and say that we've been, we have been hurt by somebody in authority. Can you raise your hand? Absolutely. And so what happens is that when someone in authority says or does something that looks anything like this other person did, then we're, all, we're like, mm-hmm. And our self-protection comes out. And the wall comes up. But if you're willing to actually say, some, say something, somebody, um, which I won't say who because I haven't had a chance to talk to them yet, but they um, called Matthew and they said, hey, I'm just wondering, like, you know, I said something, and then this, then she said this, it was about me, and then it was like, is everything, you know, something okay? And it was awesome. Do you want to know why? Because they called. They could have not called, and they could have just been hurt, and they could have just walked away. But that tells me that's a heart that's seeking healing. Are you listening to me? That's vulnerability. That's transparency. That's someone who wants to be more like Jesus. So I commend you, by the way, you're in here. I commend you. Thank you. So what's happening is that this is what's happening in their life. They're like, I want to be respectful and I want to be honoring. You see them as ministers of God for good in your life. And that's what's happening in this person's life. They're like, wait a second, I want to be a person of honor, so I want to understand. That's so good. Oh, I do not have time. So I was going to go back to talk about David. Um, I talked about him a few weeks ago. Remember, he went into the cave, the cave of Adullam. We, we know that the Adullam stood for a, a place of, of justice and that the, the 400 um, broken people that came to him in, in his time of need, that they had a need, and he was there for them. And I was thinking about how David knew that he was a king before he came, became a king and that because he knew he was a king before he became a king, he didn't stay a shepherd boy. Had he thought he was a shepherd boy, he would have stayed a shepherd boy. But even though he had to run away into the cave, even though he was in a place of, of solitude, a place where he felt like he, he, he was going to be safe, even though, even though it was lonely, he, he left Jonathan, he left his covenant partner, you know, his friend, he left, his, he, he left the one that he was so close to. He left, he left all of the, the things that he had going for himself to be isolated in this cave all, all by himself. But I thought, Lord, what is it though? How, did, how was he known as a man after your own heart because he always turned toward God and told him how he felt. And if you read in the Psalms, one moment he's like on cloud nine and he's like, God, you're amazing. Bless, oh Lord, you know, bless my soul and all of his benefits. I love you, you're, 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 you're this, you're that. And the next moment he's like, are you gonna deliver me from my enemies? Have you forgotten about where I'm at right now? And, it's, and it's, so it's like, it's like, is he schizophrenic? I'm like... Do you ever read through the Psalms? You're like, one moment he's high, next moment he's like on the ground. And I'm like, that's why he was a man after God's own heart. Look, God wants us to be real with him. He, he's, not, he's not looking for you to come with a religious mindset, quoting a scripture after scripture after scripture in order to connect with him. That is the Pharisees and that is Sadducees. And I'm going to use my joke. That's why they're sad, you see. And so they're, 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 they're like caught up in religion. But if you just come to him the way that you are, you say, I love my dad, my natural dad. But God, I never sat on his lap when I was little. And I'm hurt by that. I'm not dishonoring him. 
I just need you to know that that hurt me. He comes and he brings healing in that area of my heart. Father, I was 28 years old before I heard my natural dad tell me he loved me. I know he did. I'm sure he did. I just didn't hear it and I wanted to. And because I didn't, it affected me my whole life. And I'm tired of it affecting me. And now I know he was a good man. I know that he was just loving the way that he knew to love. So will you heal my heart? That's not dishonoring him. Some of you need to get real and raw with God. He wants to hear you. He doesn't want to hear you just quote his scripture back to him. He actually wants to hear you. You draw near to him and he'll draw near to you. Wholehearted people will bring wholehearted people into the kingdom. And my leadership team will always tell you, I have no problem being vulnerable. My husband doesn't always like it. He probably doesn't like me saying that. <laughs> but I spent a lot of years not being able to express my heart, a lot of years hidden, trying to cover for somebody else's life. And I'm not doing that anymore. And that has caused me to be wholehearted. <laughs> Remember, identity comes from intimacy. You can't be intimate without being vulnerable. You have to be vulnerable. I'll read one last scripture and we'll close. 2 Corinthians 5.11, Therefore, since we know the fear of the Lord and understand the importance of obedience and worship, we persuade people to be reconciled to him. But we are plainly known to God. He knows everything about us. He knows everything about us. And I hope that we are plainly known also in your conscience. I want you to know that what you see up here is who I actually am out, out here. I'm not two different people. I don't know how to do that, won't do that, can't do that, don't want to do that. This is who I am. And I promise you that if you get to know me well enough, I'm probably going to offend you. <laughs> and you will probably offend me. And we'll do this thing together. He knows everything about us. I hope plainly known. Okay, verse 12. We are not commending ourselves to you again, but are giving you an occasion to be rightfully proud of us so that you will have an answer for those who take pride in outward appearances, the virtues they pretend to have, rather than what is actually in their heart. If we are out of our mind... Unstable fanatics, as some critics say, it is for God. You know, when you're like caught up in his glory, you're, just, you're, you're, you're crazy about Jesus. People are like, well, you're nuts. But if we're in our right mind, it is for your benefit. For the love of Christ controls and compels us because we have concluded this, that one died for all, therefore all died. This is the part I want to get you to see. And he died for all so that all those who live will no longer live for themselves, but for, for him who died and was raised for their sake. My life is not my own. Your life, if you've been bought by the blood of Jesus Christ, it is not your own. It is now his life. And the life that you get to live, you get to live in him. And that life is the best life that you can ever live. And when you get that, you will find your identity and you will become a wholehearted person because you realize, wow, I am hidden in Christ, and my life's not my own. And that's why when the Lord spoke to me, he said, Kathy, it's time to meet. I, 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 I went for it. I said, you know what? I'm not testing God. I am trusting God. I am trusting God. I believe that what his word says is true. Amen? All right, stand to your feet. Give him a praise.
Thank you, Lord. Matthew, you want to come up? Oh, man, was that good or what? Come on. Holy cow. Honestly, I feel like there is so much, uh, so much transformation inside of that. Uh, if there was an area that offended you, then I would ask you to take that to the Lord because that's probably what he's trying to transform. Uh, there's, there's honestly, there's so much in identity that it's a lifelong process of us being transformed, right? We go from glory to glory, from faith to faith. And I just want to encourage each and every person after that message, just to take this, take your notes, get alone with the Lord and just ask him to reveal who you are. Ask him, ask him to see who he truly is. And that's, that's how you're going to see yourself because we are, as she just said, in Christ Jesus. We love you guys. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, right outside these doors, if you're new, we want to get to know you. We want to put a name to your face. We have the bridge uh, right to the right there. Uh, ministry team, if you would come to the front. Also, if you would please clear, uh, clear the way so that people can exit right out the front doors for those that are wanting to physically distance. Also, if you'd prefer, you can go right out this exit here to your left and you can hit right to the parking lot if you want to go that way. Uh, we're so excited that you're able to come this week. We hope that uh, we can get to know you more, create a deeper revelation of family within each other's lives because that's what we're all longing for. We want to be seen and we want to be able to see other people. And it takes us understanding who we are in Christ, taking those steps to be vulnerable with those that are around us. Anything I'm missing? I think that's it. Ministry team, I called them up. All right, ministry team, yes, you are up here. And if you want prayer in your body, that's why I called them. I'll tell you why they're up here. Uh, if you want prayer for healing, for anything in your body at all, if you just want uh, you know, somebody to stand with you for whatever it is that you may be going through, if maybe something just hit you really hard and you're like, I just feel like I just got, you know, as it says in Ephesians, the eyes of my understanding have been enlightened. You know, if there's a new revelation that took place and you want somebody to pray through that with you, please come forward. As always, we'll respect your distance if you would like. Uh, but have a great week. We will see you here next Sunday. Happy Father's Day.